We've been seeing peaks of Apple's latest iPhone for months. A home button here, a rear case there. Well, that didn't stop our excitement of getting our hands on one. So we sent our co-founder to Australia to get our first look at the iPhone 5S. This is an S version, which means it's speedier, more secure, superior, or similar in form and function to its predecessor. Whatever the S stands for, we want to take a look inside. And the teardown begins. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down Apple's new iPhone 5S. Not surprisingly, there haven't been many changes to the outward appearance of the new iPhone. It has the same dimensions of the iPhone 5. 123.8 millimeters in height, 58.6 millimeters wide, and just 7.6 millimeters thick. And even the weight comes in the same at 112 grams. One thing Apple has updated is the color choices for this version of the iPhone, allowing you to choose between space gray, silver, or gold. And lastly, we see the display is exactly the same with the resolution of 1136 by 640 and a pixel density of 326. But as with every S revision of the iPhone, the bulk of the upgrades are deep inside the familiar exterior. So get your pentalobe drivers out and let's dig right in. Opening the phone is just like the iPhone 5. Hooray, still no eye opener. We just need a pentalobe driver, suction cup, and a little spudger action. Right away, we meet our first booby trap. I mean, assembly difference in the form of a cable that connects the touch ID sensor in the home button to the lightning port assembly. With a little help from the flat end of our spudger, we make quick work of that obstacle and we're able to get our first look inside the phone. And guess what? It looks pretty much like the iPhone 5. With the battery taking up most of the inside, we're happy to see the slight upgrade from the iPhone 5, coming in at 3.8 volts, 1,560 milliamp hours, giving us a boost of 10 hours of talk time from the iPhone 5's eight hours. We'll take it. We are just itching to get our hands on the much anticipated home button and touch ID sensor. So let's touch on that. The iPhone 5S home button is now equipped with a snazzy new CMOS chip. We are slightly worried about how well the sapphire crystal covering the sensor can protect it from degrading over time, but for now, we're just gonna be excited about the cool upgrade. The Touch ID is essentially a bunch of very small capacitors that creates an image of the ridges in your finger. Just think of it as a selfie for your finger, or more accurately, multiple finger selfies, as the Touch ID sensor requires five to 10 images to fully capture your finger's ridges. Speaking of selfies, when we uncover the EyeSight rear-facing camera, we're pretty happy about the upgrades here as well. Well. This 8.8 .8 megapixel camera has a five element lens with 2.2 aperture, giving it a 33% increase in light sensitivity. And thanks to some super cool new software, is capable of slow-mo video at 720p and burst mode photography. Sounds like fun. As we turn our attention to the logic board, we find the heart of this phone. The chip we've all been waiting to see. This is the A7 processor. The A7 is the first 64-bit processor found in a smartphone, and thanks to its updated ARM V8 instruction set, it's able to increase performance and efficiency without sacrificing battery life. Apple claims the A7 will give you two times the CPU and graphics performance of an A6. So taking pictures, shooting video, and playing games will be even more epic with this processor. With our teardown complete, it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, our mission is to teach people how to repair everything. So we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between one and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and one being the most difficult. The iPhone 5S scores a six out of 10 for repairability. And here's why. On the plus side, and just like the iPhone 5, you will only need a few tools to replace the front panel assembly. But on the downside, Apple is still using those pesky proprietary screws, so you'll need a special pentalobe driver to remove them. In addition, the lightning connector has lots of small components soldered onto it, making replacing just one part of it impossible. But the final downside and the reason for scoring a six is the battery. There's no pull tab this time, and there's a considerable amount of adhesive. For the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest teardowns and repair videos. And you can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com ifixit.